Greetings in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Joe Fierce, and I am here to continue my series on the big picture, dealing with Bible prophecy. And particularly, we're looking at the rapture of the church. But we will look at various aspects of the end times. This is episode six. Now, if you remember in the last episode, one of my final phrases was from chapter four, verse 18 of First Thessalonians. And it said, comfort one another with these words. One of the things I always tell my students in my in Bible college and Bible class, I tell them, I says, pretext, that means before, post text, after, and context. What is this saying? And we have to take what is saying, and this has to relate to what was said before and what was said afterwards. Amen. Okay. So now that's what I always try to tell my students when you're studying the Bible. You got to stay on point. And we're going to see what Paul is trying to do as he continues to explain this situation going on with the people that were living in Thessalonica at the time. As I told you, Timothy had gone down and he discovered that they had a lot of questions. So Paul is responding to all the questions that they had uh, given Timothy. And one of the questions that we discovered in the first uh, Thessalonians chapter 4 was about the resurrection, about there was concern about their family members that were dying. When would they see them again? Would they see them again? And Paul began to do some teaching that you don't find in the text, but he made... Um, Hence, and he had told him about certain things, but we don't have the information, but we can come to conclusion based on his letter that he had given them some insight on the end times and about our being gathered together and what it was going to be like. And, and Paul even said when he was talking in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, that this is a mystery. So this whole teaching, what I'm talking to you about, about the rapture, really is a mystery at that time. Uh, it wasn't made known clearly through the scriptures. So we have to look at that and, and look intentively to better understand what's going on. So what I'm trying to do as we methodically look at this, these next several chapters, as we go from chapter 5 to Second Thessalonians chapter 1 and so forth and so on, we have to look at it from a methodical point of view. We have to look at it uh, pretext, post-text, and content. So a lot of people take this particular topic and they just mess it up because they are trying to disprove the rapture or they are trying to prove the rapture. And those that are trying to prove the rapture may not have all the right scriptures, may not have the full understanding, and they, they just mess it up. And then those that are, that are just simply reading different verses to prove that there is a rapture, they mess it up. So if we're going to rightly divide the word of God, we have to sit back and see what is the pretext, what is the post-text, and what is the content? What is Paul really trying to say? And we can clearly see that he was trying to comfort them, to ease the stress, to ease the pain, to let them not be so worried about when the Lord would come. In particular, as I told you in my other episodes, about the day of the Lord and the day of Christ. This is what he's dealing with right here. He's still dealing with this. He's trying to uh, give clarity because it can be confusing. It, even for us, it's confusing because some people today just lump it all together and say the day of the Lord is the same as the day of Christ, but it's not. And I've proven that if you go to watch that episode. But today I want to start off in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians verse 1. I want to read this. It says, but concerning the times and the season, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. So he's telling them, now I've already talked to you. Now you know we've already discussed this. I've told you before that you don't need to be stressed out over this stuff because I told you when I was with you about these things. So the, 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 the chronos and the kairos, these are Greek words. Chronos is saying... Um, like sequential time, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And Kairos deals with a specific time. So he's telling them, you know, you don't need to be worried about the times and the season. 
you know, what time it is and what season it is because I've already explained to you how things are going to be and how things are going to happen. I told you that in First Thessalonians chapter 4 that we were going to be caught up. Before all these things happen. That's what he's trying to tell them. He's trying to comfort them. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 2 says, For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief of the, of the night. So he's dealing with the day of the Lord here. He's still dealing with this because they're still not fully getting it. So Paul is trying to write and make clarity and trying to give them clarity because he knows it's a letter. He knows they're going to have more questions. So he's trying to say the day of the Lord because he had obviously told them about the day of the Lord previously and what it was and how it was one of those rough days. It was a difficult day. It was a day of judgment. And all you got to do is uh, read the Old Testament. You will find out that day of the Lord is a horrible day. In fact, my other episode, I talked directly about the day of the Lord. And I show how the day of the Lord differs from the day of Christ. And Paul tried to divide it so they could better understand there was going to be one moment when Christ is going to come to, to commence the tribulation period. Then the next moment, uh, Christ is going to be coming to get the church out of the tribulation period. But he gets the church before it starts. One moment, he coming uh, to kick us out. And the next moment, he's going to be initiating some uh, trumpets and some seals and some vows to bring judgment on, on this earth. So Paul is trying to let them know the day of the Lord, you know, it's going to be like a thief in the night. It's going to be just like Jesus said, so as it is in the day of Noah, so will it be when the Son of Man coming. They're going to be eating. They're going to be drinking. They're going to be partying. They're going to be buying. They're going to be building. They're going to be selling. They're going to be sinning. And they're going to be doing what people do in general and not regarding that the time is up. He said, but now you don't need to be concerned about that. Because it's only going to be a thief to those who are not ready. Now, verse 3 says, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. If you know anything about pregnancy and women when they're pregnant, they don't know when that baby's coming. Sometimes they walk, they want it to come, but they don't know when that water's going to break. But when it does, it's nothing going to stop that baby from coming. It is going to come. And it can be a long evolution and a painful evolution. And this is what the Lord is saying. When that day come, it's going to be like a thief in the night. It's going to be like a woman that's getting ready to have a baby. I mean, it's going to be rough during the tribulation period. That's what we're talking about. That's when the Lord, when he, when he initiates that, when he come and get the church, the door is going to be open for the starting of a tribulation period. And then the period actually really starts when uh, the Antichrist of uh, the man of sin signs a peace treaty with nations. He's going to strengthen it. It's going to include the nation of Israel. But it's going to be a rough period of time. And verse 4 says, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. See, it's not going to take us as a thief. It's not. We, we, right now, we, we are supposed to be looking and waiting and at the same time occupying. We don't, be, we don't, we don't do what everybody else do. We, pay, we stay focused and we pay attention to the things that are going on around us. I love these, these uh, people that are, are the watchmen. They, they come on to these YouTubes and they're good. It's necessary. It's needed. They're keeping us alert. And I love it that a lot of them are not setting dates like some people have in the past. They're just really just doing good teaching and keeping us focused. And I love it. And I, 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 I'm, in, I'm excited about that. But let's go on to verse 5. It says, You are sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So Paul, in other words, saying we are alert. We're not walking like the world. We're walking in the light. We are aware of things. And we're paying attention to, you know, what's going on in the world. And we are, we are paying attention. And we're being uh, the soldiers that the Lord want us to be. That's what he's really saying. We are walking right, upright before the Lord. Now, verse 6 says, Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. 
Because it's so easy to get caught up in this world. It's so easy to focus on the things in this world. And he said, don't do that. Stay sober. You know, don't, don't, don't go to sleep like the rest of the world. It's easy to look at things and not pay attention and get caught up in this world because this world is pulling at us 24-7. From the moment we get up to the moment we sleep, the world is trying to take our attention off of what is important. So, but he's, he's encouraging them. Don't, don't you do that. You be on watch. You be watchful. You pay attention. Don't, don't get, to, don't go to sleep. Now, verse seven says, for those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. So he's saying that basically he's talking about sinful things happen at night. And they do evil at night when it don't, when it looks like they're getting away with it. So these are the type of things he was trying to let them, he was telling the people, he was just letting them know, don't be like the world. Don't go to sleep. Just keep watching because what the world does is what the world has always done. Now verse 8 says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. He says, put on the breastplate of faith and love. We got to walk in faith. Let's just be faithful. He's talking to them. He says, be faithful and, and love. Don't go around, you know, acting like the world. Don't go around, you know, jumping on politic, political bandwagons like the world. Don't go around doing what the world do. Don't bash the presidents. Don't bash people. That's what the world's doing. We are peculiar people, a royal priesthood, that we should show for praises to God. And these are the way we have to live righteously before God, soberly minded. He says the helmet of hope and salvation. In other words, he's saying, you know what? You have faith and love in your heart. You know why? Because you have salvation. You are born again. Jesus has given you hope. Your loved ones, you don't have to worry about them. Jesus has given us this thing called salvation. Hallelujah. In verse 9, he says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you get that? And we're talking about God's wrath. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. It starts at the beginning of the tribulation period, and it ends at the end of the tribulation period. And really, it, it go, it's really going to end at the white throne judgment when people get judged. But the day of the Lord is a terrible day. That's what he's talking about, the day of the Lord. He's trying to let them know. He's trying to let them ease their, ease their conscience. Look, the day of the Lord. Now, this is the whole, this is the topic right now in this chapter. He's talking about the day of the Lord, that that day don't take you. He's talking about that day. He said that day is not going to take you. He said, you know why? Because God has not appointed us. He's not appointed us to this day, but to have faith and love and salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's trying to let them see. That's what he's trying to comfort them. He's telling them, guys, hey, you don't have to sweat it. Stop stressing. Stop worrying. We've been appointed to salvation, not wrath, not the wrath of God. All you got to do is read the Bible. Go and read the Bible and you'll see that whenever God poured his direct wrath out, he, he protected his people or he removed them from various situations. It's just the way it is. That's what God did. And you can just go from the time of before the flood came. He took Enoch off the planet and he put Noah and his family in a boat. When, when the, when the uh, Solomon and Gomorrah was hit, he took Lot and his family away and he rained down fire. It was his fire. He initiated this. So there are times in history where God himself initiates judgment. And then there are times where God himself allows judgment. And a lot of times we see that with the nation of Israel. He allowed Israel's uh, enemy to persecute them because they were disobedient. They was uh, worshiping asteroids and bells and all these other things. And they wasn't focused on God. So God would just step back. And he would allow the enemy to come in and arrest them for so many years, or, or, or however long he decided, until they would cry out to him. But when God's wrath come, no matter what happened, 
It's going to run its course. And that's what we're talking about with the tribulation period. It is God's realm. All the stuff that has happened here before, most of it over the last 2,000 years, has been man's inhumanity to man. It is tribulation, and it is persecution, but it is not God's. It is not God's wrath. That's the big difference. God exempts those that are his from his direct wrath. Let's look at it. Even when Israel was in Egypt, they was over in the land of Goshen and in Egypt, Pharaoh, all the plagues that were coming, they were hitting Pharaoh and his people, but they did none of them came upon Israel because it was God's direct wrath. It was his wrath uh, or his fiery trials that he was initiating. So he didn't, he didn't subject his people to that. And neither will he subject his people to the wrath to come. Amen. That's what Paul is trying to tell him. We are not appointed. It's not, we are not appointed. And, 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 and we are saying, and some people will say, well, there's always been persecution. Yes, but it's not God. It's not God's. It's not God's wrath. It's just not. And that's what we're dealing with. That's what Paul's trying to tell them. He's trying to reassure them. He's giving them assurance. You're not going to go through that day of the Lord. Remember, that's what we're talking about, the day of the Lord. Content, pretext, post-text. If we put it together, it'll make sense. Let's go to verse 10. It says, Who died for us, that whether we are asleep, uh, we live together with him. He said, Paul said, guys, guys, remember what I told you. It doesn't matter if, if you die to today, if you die tomorrow. It doesn't matter if you die in Christ, you're good. Remember, I told you we're going to be, we, the dead are going to raise first. We're going to be caught up later. The dead are going to go first and then we're going to get caught up and we're going to get our glorified bodies. Hello? That's what he's trying to tell them. Yo, you guys are fretful over stuff you don't need to be fretful over. You have salvation. You're not wrapped. You're not going to go through the devil. Lord, it's so clear. He's telling them that day is not for you. It's for the unbelievable. It's for the ungodly. It's for the sinner. And really, it's to get them to repent. The same way he would do Israel when he would allow certain things is to get them to repent. And if some of them, not, a lot of them are not going to repent, but God is doing everything he can to turn people hard towards him. Verse 11 says, Therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you are also doing. Amen. Amen. So, listen. You and I are not called to God's wrath. The day of the Lord, and Paul is specifically talking about the day of the Lord in this particular chapter. And he's going to continue on, and I'm going to continue on in episode 7. See you then. God bless. Have a good day. Thank you.